All right, so let's see our last topic in the memory allocation uh, section now, which is going to be about uh, memory bugs in C, memory related bugs in C, and how to deal with them and how complicated and nasty they can be. Okay? Um, there are many, many problems in manipulating memory and pointers in C. Okay? You could dereference a bad pointer, you could read memory that was uninitialized, you could overwrite memory uh, without noticing, you could reference non-existent variables, you could free a block multiple times, uh, you could um, reference free blocks so you get garbage that was in memory, whatever, whatever was there, or you might fail to free blocks and exhaust your memory and so on. Okay? So let's start with the referencing bad pointer. Okay, so here's what's happening here. We declare a variable val, and we call scanf, which just reads something from input and stores it in val. Okay, and, uh, but what we're supposed to have done here is to have passed the address of val to scanf as opposed to val. But the problem here is that in the best case, in the, but scanf doesn't know, it's just going to interpret that as a value, and it's going to consider that a pointer. So in the best case, your program is just going to terminate immediately, and because of a sag fault, it's going to cause a sag fault. But in the worst case, the contents of val actually corresponds to some valid read-write area of memory that you're going to do it. And then later in the execution of your program, you're going to have problems. Okay, not good, evil, hard to find, complicated. So be careful that uh, when when you um, pass a value as a parameter, make sure that actually, and it happens, it's going to be interpreted as a pointer. Make sure you're actually passing a pointer as opposed to some other random value. Okay. The other problem that happens often is just reading uninitialized memory, okay? So here, suppose that I have this vector y here, okay, allocate space for it, it has, uh, you know, n, n ints, okay, it's sp as sp enough space for n ints, but I don't, uh, I don't initialize it. And here, when I'm doing y of i plus equals a and whatever, the, the, the rest of the expression, I'm implicitly reading y, because it's going to be y equals y plus the rest of the expression. So when I read y, whatever was there before, for the first time I read it, it's just going to be whatever was there, some garbage. So it's going to affect the computation and leads, for sure, lead to bad results. Okay, so do not assume that the, the free blocks in the heap when you allocate it, they're going to be initialized to zero. Unless you use a function that calls it, like calloc, for, C alloc, for example, uh, initializes to zero. Okay, but normally people don't do it because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's expensive. Okay. So the other one, you might be overriding memory because uh, there's many ways of overriding memory. And one of them, we're going to tell you a bunch of those now. But the first one is you allocate uh, a possibly wrong size object. For example, here I have P, which is supposed to be pointer pointer, a vector of pointers, okay? N elements, N pointers uh, to, to size of N, okay? So, but later here, I'm going to assign to P of I another pointer. But look at what, what I allocated here. Hmm, it's an int as opposed to an int star. Bad, right? So why, why can this potentially override memory? Well, first of all, whenever I'm doing this, this, if this is a 64-bit machine, this is going to, so uh, int star is 64 bits. Okay, so this is a 64-bit assignment. Okay, not good. It's going to override memory. Okay? Um, you can also, another one that's pretty common, it's off by one error. Okay, again, suppose I had the same example there, and uh, now I actually have the right, um, the right object size, int star, so that's not a problem. But the problem here is that in this loop, I'm going from 0 to n, so I'm assuming that it's going to, so this loop is going to actually traverse n plus 1 elements, but we only had n. So the last right here, which is going to be p of n, is overriding whatever is after n in after p in memory okay so it's going to overwrite stuff there for sure not good okay now the other problem is not checking the size of a string before you write it okay so here's an example you have uh you de you declare a a array of eight bytes in your stack okay and then you pass it as a parameter to get s and then you go and read the string that goes from that one two three four five six seven eight nine okay and we're going to have one extra byte here with the slice here. This is already 10 bytes, but I had I only had 8. It's going to overwrite uh, stuff in your stack. Can, can, it can potentially affect even the return pointer in the stack. And in fact, this is the basis for classic buffer overflow attack. You pass something that's bigger than what's expected and end up overwriting things on the stack. And you're going to have, you're actually going to play with that in one of your assignments. Okay? 
So you might also overwrite memory by simply misunderstanding point arithmetic. For example, if you have a function uh, called search, okay, and you pass as a parameter a pointer p, pointer to int, and a value val. And this, this loop here, just from, so this is going to be, you now we're going to have an array of ints in memory, and p points to the first element, and then this loop is going to traverse this and um, look at each one to see what it matches val. Okay? But, and the way we're doing this, at every uh, iteration of the loop, we're going to make p bump to the next one, the next one, and so on. But what I'm doing here, I'm actually adding size of ints, but since I already told the compiler that p is an int because that's how it's declared here, the compiler is already doing this implicit multiplication uh, with the size of the object. So there's going to be size of multiplied by size of, so it's going to be bumping the pointer by more than it should. Okay, and then when you return it, it's just going to, first of all, we're going to read stuff crap from memory, and then you're going to go and uh, return it, which could be used in a way and overwritten, and that's going to be write memory. Okay, again, not good. Here's another one. Uh, when you reference a pointer, you want to make sure that you're actually referencing what you expect. Okay, so uh, if you reference a pointer as opposed to the object that you point to, that could be a problem. So here's an example. When I call, w w when I execute star size minus minus here, I'm not decrementing the value of size, which is clearly what's intended in this code. I'm decrementing the size of the pointer for. Okay, so I'm just pointing somewhere, and then uh, when I pass this as a parameter, I'm not going to get what I expect. Okay, I'm going to be pointing whatever is, comes before size in, in memory. And that's because the operators uh, minus, minus, and star have the same precedence, and therefore we go from right to left. Okay, so the decrement happens first. That's not what, what, what was intended. Okay, that's also, so be careful when you use these operators. Now, the other problem is if you return a pointer to something on your stack. Okay, so in this example, I have variable val, which is in foos, uh, it's going to be allocated in the stack, okay? And I'm going to return its pointer. As soon as I return this pointer, the invocation of foo term ends, and the stack frame is freed. That means that it might be there, but later when you use it, that could be easily overwritten when you do more function calls. So be careful with that too. Never return a pointer to the stack unless in some very, very special circumstances. But even then, you, you should find ways of not doing that. So another problem that could happen uh, with uh, pointers is just you free a block multiple times. Okay, dangerous too. So for example, if I allocate a, a piece of memory in, here in, in this example and store into x and manipulate it, and then re, uh, later I manipulate, I, I free x after being done with it, then I allocate something into y, and then I happen to call free x again. But what if this was allocated in the same position and I freed? Hmm, that might actually be freeing y, just because it happens to be in the same place. Okay? So, um, and free won't return any errors here be because it could, could be that it's still a valid block in that case, but it's not only intended, you wanted to free that. So be careful. Okay, so be, be careful when uh, uh, calling free and make sure that you're not calling it twice. And in this case, it's a problem because you have reallocated something that could have happened to be um, uh, free already. So call free only once for each object, okay? So the other problem is referencing free blocks. This is just evil. Be careful, okay? So again, uh, similar to what we had before, we allocate a bunch of memory, put it in X, I manipulate it, and then I free it. And then later, I reference X again. Data might still be there, but it could have been, so it might be over, overwritten because if I do a malloc here, I could use memory just, just freed by this one, just like the previous one, okay? And now when I do x here, it might affect, in fact, be y here. You never know. So it could be something, and so be, be careful not to reference memory that you have freed, okay? So that can't happen. So the other problem is what we call memory leak. When you allocate something, so you, you allocate and you use it, and then, so in this case, this, is gonna, this pointer is going to be dead, right? Because I, the only pointer, I don't return any pointers here, so, and the pointer uh, to what I just allocated is, is on full stack. When full returns, that's, that's gone. But I haven't freed it, so I no longer, I'm no longer going to know what the pointer is, so I can't free it. So that's a problem. So memory leaks are really a long, uh, a, a, long-term killer and they're slow and silent, okay? Be careful because it's eventually going to exhaust your heap without noticing it. Um, now, another problem that happens 
uh, and that might lead to failing to free blocks and lead to memory leaks is that you only free part of a data structure. Okay, for example, suppose that we have a struct here called lists. It has uh, a certain, it's a linked list, right? It has a value, has a payload here, and then a pointer, okay? And then when we uh, create um, this, this, this list, you know, create a head here, allocate uh, size of struct, okay? And then um, I, I set an X here to, to, to no, so I'm not pointing to anything. This is actually, when I'm allocating here, I'm allocating space for both the val and the pointer, okay? I didn't create and manipulate the rest of the list, but then I just free heads. But for each element, I'm gonna do a, a, um, a malloc. But when I do free head, I'm just gonna free the first one. So you have to be careful, not the rest. So you have to be careful to, if you have a linked list, and you're gonna allocate each element of the linked list in the, uh, separately, when you free it, you free all of them. You traverse it and free all of them. Otherwise, you're gonna have memory, uh, memory leak, okay? So there are many ways of dealing with, uh, well, I wish there were many ways. It's just a handful of ways of dealing with memory bugs. You can use the debugger, GDB, okay? So it's good for finding bad pointer references, but it's hard to detect other memory bugs. For example, memory leaks are hard to, to, to detect, uh, to find with debuggers. So there is um, a special version of malloc, for example, uh, this, the University of Toronto's uh, CSRI malloc. Um, it has special features. Okay, it's a wrapper around the typical malloc, and it detects several memory bugs, okay? So at the boundaries of mallocs and freeze, okay? So um, it detects things like memory overrides that, that corrupt heap structures. Uh, it detects some instances of freeing blocks multiple times. It detects memory leaks. You know that if you free and you don't, if you malloc and you don't free, it might alert you and so on. But it cannot detect all memory bugs. Okay, so you cannot detect overwrites into the middle of allocated blocks because it doesn't monitor all of the reads and writes to memory. Okay, it, it, it's hard to, to detect fleeing block twice that has been allocate, reallocating the interim because we saw one of these problems under, um, earlier in this video. And uh, if you allocate it again, something that if you're going to free it again, it could be that it was reallocated, don't really know uh, that, that you didn't, you're actually freeing twice. So that's actually very hard to find. And also does not detect uh, referencing freed blocks because it can only detect things at the boundaries of malloc and, and free um, calls. Not it doesn't instrument all of the memory um, all of the memory accesses. Okay, so um, there's there is another one. Uh, there's this tool called Val, Valgrind that actually does binary instrumentation of your program and actually moni monitors much more of the execution. So it's pretty powerful. Okay, it actually rewrites the text, the code to to do special things. And it, and it can check, it, so, and since it instruments your whole program, it can check each individual reference at runtime, things like bad point overriding and referencing outside of allocated block, um, and so on. And by the way, some malloc implementations contain some check code. Okay, so you can actually set, so if you use the Linux uh, glibc malloc uh, library, you can set an environment variable that's gonna check some, um, um, s s some of the calls to the memory allocator. Okay, so it's uh, so equivalent things available in FreeBSD. Well, this concludes our uh, section on memory allocation, and I hope you learned what you should avoid in writing C code with pointers.